Oh, come on, Maggie. What's that? It's nothing. What is it? It can fly. What? Dickie made it. It can fly. Give us a look. We'll be late for school. I'll show you later. I want to see it now. You better go with them. Wait for me. What have you been? Oh, down to the post office. Telegraph Tessa Wood. Oh, I should have known. What are you after? Nothing, really. Just wondering if you were still a member of the family. Oh, yeah. You shifted in. Now, listen. Mother was wondering when we'd be seeing you for dinner again. Just because I stay over for a couple well, of nights. two miles away. Oh, I've been busy. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Look, you can tell Mother Trawall it's still my home. Sorry if I put her to any trouble. I'll come home this evening for dinner. I suppose you've got some dirty washing that needs doing. You sound more like Father every day. At least he comes straight out with it. Well, if you want to make a damn fool of yourself, wasting your time with that ridiculous... Except you're not, Father, are you? So keep your sermons to yourself. Are you playing tennis tomorrow? Yeah. I didn't see your name on the board. No, I'm playing for the school. What's wrong with the terrace? Nothing. You'd probably beat us. I should have thought you'd rather play for the club your family supported. I know, I'd prefer to make my own choice. You prefer to be bloody-minded. I'll tell Mother to expect you for dinner. what we are about to receive, O Lord, make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. In here, Mrs. Bennett. Oh, I saw the light. I said to myself, I wonder if that Richard stopped to make himself a meal. Oh, 
You needn't have gone to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. It's only stew. It's just a scoop of what I had for dinner myself. Ah, oh, dinner. I promised I'd be home for dinner this evening. Your mother will understand. Come on. No, look, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bennett. Have you any idea of the time? Well, it's about nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? Thank you, Mother. That was very nice. It was cold, but it's your own fault. Jack, that was a good day. Yes. I'll finish the end paddock in the morning. Oh, you're not playing tennis then? Not until 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. See you in the morning, Father. All right, Jack. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Some post for you, Richard. much of you lately? No, Father. Been hard at work on that block of yours? What were you doing tonight, then? Mustering by the full moon. I was busy in my workshop. Well, what were you doing? Working on my engine. I don't know, Richard, I'm sure. Your paddocks are thick with thistles, your fences are overgrown. You've got the sorriest mob of sheep I ever did see. All you can think of doing is wasting time on some machine. Well, I'm not much inclined to farming, Father. Sure, indeed. I give my son 100 acres of prime land and he tells me he's not inclined to farm. It's gratitude for you. Well, take a look at yourself, Richard. You're, you're a laughing stock. You're fooling around in that workshop while the weeds have grown up around your ears. But if it was agricultural machinery you would invent, and there'd be some sense to it. That's not my interest. Oh, no, you'd rather build a machine to fly in the air. And what earthly use will it be to you? Will it pull a plough or mend a fence? Richard, you... You'll be thinking soon of a wife and a family. Do you think that land will support you? Well, do you? No, Father. Then isn't it about time we had some changes? <laughs> 30, 40. If Richard wins this match, they'll take to the tournament. Yes. He should be playing for us, not for them. I don't know who to barrack for, I'm sure. For the club, Annie. Barrack for the club. Dick, you won the tournament. It was an enjoyable game. You played very well, Richard. Not often I'm winning against Vaughan. What does your father think about you playing for the opposition? Oh, you stick with us. It's about time we show them they're not unbeatable. Ah, Vaughan. How have you been keeping, Rose? Oh, well enough. I've been meaning to come and see you. Oh. To say how much I enjoyed the dance on Saturday night. I hope you didn't think I was monopolizing you too much all evening. I don't see why I should share myself around. <laughs> Are you staying for afternoon tea? Only if you promise not to talk about your engine. Oh, I hope I didn't bore you with it. Oh. <laughs> promise I won't mention it. Ladies and gentlemen. The speech I had prepared was a speech of acceptance. <laughs> White Toy Terrace has been winning this tournament for some time now. And I must admit that I really didn't expect today to be any exception. <laughs>
We were beaten, and beaten soundly, by a very skillful and sporting opposition. I'm sure many of our supporters found it unusual to see a member of the Pierce family playing on the visiting team. But I'm relying on my good friend Diggory here to see that that doesn't happen again. <laughs> but no doubt, the very close battle in the final match between Brother Wern and Richard was a fitting conclusion to a fine day's happiness. And so, it only remains for me to present the trophy. Our heartiest congratulations to the captain of the winning team. Thank you, Mr. Wall. Hello, Mr. Wood. Hello, Richard. I've got the mic of these barking plugs. Oh, you needn't have bothered. The train would have done. Well, I got your telegraph yesterday. You seemed a bit anxious. Anyway, I'm eager to see this engine yours for myself. How long will you be here? Just finished. Well, then, let's go. Hello, Rose. Mikey, where's Richard? He left during the speeches. Well, where did he go? I don't know. I don't care either. Hmm. Double acting. Crosshead. Stuffing boxes. Looks more like a steam engine than one that runs on petrol. Well, the stuffing box is the only way I could control the leakage. It's the best solution I could think of. What's it weigh? About 120 pounds. Horsepower? 20, perhaps 25. God, from an engine that size? Well, it's for an aeroplane. It has to be light. It has to be powerful. quiet this evening. How can I talk to you when you're asleep? <laughs> well, I'm awake now. What's on your mind? Oh, Richard. Oh. Well, he excused himself from dinner, you know. Aye, so he could work on his blasted engine. Well, it's his own time. You can hardly expect him to do farm work at night. Oh. I don't see him doing much of it during the day. I often wonder, did we send the right one to university? Hmm? What do you mean? Tom will make a fine doctor. Oh, yes, I know. But Richard, well, he always wanted to be an engineer. Well, I've told him, if that's his interest, he can go and talk to the blacksmith. But it's all I can afford to send our Tom to Edinburgh. Yes, Diggory. I know. But what if Richard had been our firstborn? Would he have been a doctor, too? It's amazing. <coughs> Irrigation pipe for cylinders. Well, it's 3 16th steel. That's what I want. Where's the flywheel? There's there's not the kind of flywheel you're looking for. I use the propeller as a flywheel. The, the, the whole problem is to save weight. Oh, you see? And I do without a clutch and gearing that way. <laughs> Petrol tap. Stand back, Jimmy. All right.
system. Yeah, that's the core. False sparking plug. Mm -hmm. Well, there's four chambers, you see. Yes. Yeah. There's two cylinders, double acting, crosshead here. Yes. Yeah. The whole thing is to save weight, so I've got two chambers in each cylinder. Oh, I see. So I've got the work of four cylinders for the weight of two. That's right. right. <laughs> Well, the problem, the main problem, has been to seal off the ends, you see? Yes. Because normally you've got just the piston coming up, but it, in this case you have the rod going through. So there's leakage yes. from the gases yes. at these extra chambers I've put in. Stuffing boxes. Stuffing <laughs> boxes, yeah. That's, a, that's the solution, and, and it seems to work. Yes. Worked on a steam engine, it's why right. shouldn't it work with oil? It's light enough. I've got the right weight to power ratio. Mm. I think it could fly. Useless bloody fool, you might have killed us both. If Jesus have you, mistress, I'll never know. Good day, Mr. O'Shea. Racing along the road on a bicycle with an, with an arm full of spears. Not Mercy spears. mine. What the hell are you playing at? Bamboo for my aeroplane. Now, the only way you'll fly me, boy -o, is on angels' wings. And the way you're going, that's not too far off at all, at all. Get up. What the hell's that got to do with you? Well, every time you lose, Mad John's been cheated. At least when he cheats, he wins. There's more than can be said for you. Are you calling me a cheat? Oh, you heard him. All right. All right. Do we play or do we go home? <laughs> no cheat, Mr. O'Neill Farrell. <laughs> 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 Oh. It's time you did something about that brother of yours, Jack. Which one? Ah, oh, the mad one. What's his name? Uh, Richard. What's he been up yeah. to now? Are you worried about your daughter, Farrell? That'll be the day. Uh, from what I hear, the day's already been. What do you mean? Probably just a rumor. What rumor? Ah, just that the chicken wasn't all confined to the church hall on Saturday night. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good hand. I put your money where your mouth is. I'm waiting for my John. I bet five. Who did I? Oh. Sweet rose of mine. Sweet rose of mine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Yours and uh, up four. You're talking about, uh, Richard? Yeah, did you hear it? Yeah. He destroyed my horse this morning. Oh, Screaming down right. the road he was with an armful of spikes. He's a miracle I'm still here. Well, seeing you are, Farrell, how about playing your hand? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. I passed. I'll see you. Jack? We don't often see you here on a card, no? <laughs> What's this I hear about uh, an accident you nearly had with Farrell O'Shea? Well, you know what he's like with a horse and cart. Drives like a madman. According to the vision I was told, it was... Oh, you. wouldn't you rather be playing cards? You don't give tuppence for your family, do you? What's the matter, Jack? Do I embarrass you?
Good morning, Richard. Good morning. Hello, Rose. Oh, Jill. You weren't in church this morning. Look, Rose, I'm sorry about the other day. I always apologise on Richard Pierce. Yes. Maggie, the minister wants to see you about your Sunday school class. Oh. I didn't see you inside. Rose, I'm sorry. When can I see you again? Isn't that up to you? Well, your father doesn't seem to like me calling. Are you going to the Oars Garden Party? Not much of a one for social chit-chat. Oh, to be sure, I'd hate you to put yourself out. Well, we had a letter from Tom yesterday. He seems to have done very well in his examinations. <laughs> oh, he was a bright one. Too clever by heart to be a farmer. <laughs> What should we do with the afternoon? What say we shoot ourselves a few rabbits? Yes. On Sunday? On Sunday? Yeah, and why not? We haven't time to bag them during the week. What do you say, Richard? I promised to help Ruth with a new kite. Oh. Oh, well. Excuse me, my dear. Come on, those that are coming. long holes he's going to cover with canvas and tie an engine on and put the whole thing on wheels and... Oh, yes, well, I dare say you know more about it than I do. And why would you be thinking that, Mrs. Bennett? Well, I thought you two were courting. And what gave you that impression? Oh, now, come now, you haven't been quarrelling. I'm afraid Richard's more interested in his inventions than he is in social diversions. Oh. Oh, he's never one for joining in. Always wants us to go off on our own. Sometimes I think it's a shame to be seen with me in public. Oh, now, come now, Rose. Then why isn't he coming to the garden party? Oh, is that it? Amongst other things. <laughs> well, I think he'll be going to the garden party. He needn't put himself out. You know he's very fond of you, don't you, Rose? Well, he has a strange way of showing it. You're doing a fine job of work, Mr. O'Shea. I must say your wife was very kind lending you. Ah, oh, it is no trouble at all, Mrs. Bennett. No trouble at all. That's lovely, Mrs. Bennett. Glad you enjoyed it. You really should stop bringing me my meals like this. Oh, someone has to look after you. I was going to do the dishes as well. Stop fussing. I'll pour the tea. me yesterday. Oh? Yes, her mother very kindly lent me Farrell for the afternoon to chop some firewood. <laughs> He'd like that. Rose told me that you're not going to the Oars Garden Party. Did she? Are you? No, I wasn't planning to. Well, it's not my style of function. Well, I thought they were raising money for the tennis club. Yeah, I don't play for the tennis club anymore. Well, what about Rose? Well, would you say it was her style of function? No doubt. Oh, what chance does a pretty girl have to show off her a dress in Waitoi nowadays? I thought you loved the girl. Well, I'm very fond of her. There's no need to explain yourself, Richard. As long as you're honest to Rose. And to yourself.
Mrs. Brennan. Yes, come with me. What do you think? I think... There's a lot of been working on, the wing veins. And most people have supposed you'd have to warp the wings, to, to have them twist like a bird's wings. I don't think that's necessary. I think it weakens the structure, and I think I can get just as good control with these little flaps. Well, what do they do? Well, uh, all right, I'll show you. Now, stay there. It all works from the stick. You see, you've got one on each wing. And that gives me control over its lateral movement. If, if I'm going round in a shallow curve like that, to get back on a straight course, I've got to lift that wing. So I raise that flap. I've been worried about it returning properly, so I think I've got to put in a spring under there. But that gives you complete lateral control. But it looks so small in comparison. Well, I've tested that. I tied the whole structure to a fence. A fairly high wind. I couldn't estimate exactly. I'd say about 25 miles an hour. And, and tested the controls there, because those are conditions very much like you'll meet when you're in the air. And at first, it lifts the whole plane off. You haven't got enough control. So, so the flaps now are smaller than I thought they'd have to be. But I've got the control all right. But how do you get off the ground? How do you... Well, uh, there's a horizontal rudder. It's almost instinctive, I think, I hope. You're going forward, and you build up speed, and you've got to somehow bite into the air to get up. So you lean back and pull the rudder back, and that raises the, the horizontal rudder and lift you up into the air. I think it works. But it doesn't look anything like a bird. Well, it, it doesn't have to look like a bird. It's a flying machine. I believe you really will fly this machine. But you will come to the garden party too, won't you? Oh, the garden party? <laughs> Florrie. I haven't sold any. You haven't sold any? I'll buy the lot. Oh, what you've got nice can you little bones? Toppy apples. <laughs> I don't know. Can't leave them. Oh, there. I know. Come on, kids. Free toppy apples for everyone. Come on. There we are. One for you. There you are. There we are. There we are. Build a big one of these, Mr. Pierce, and they could drain those bottom paddocks of yours. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Amazing, Jimmy. And you built all this yourself? Well, I designed it. I had the parts cast and machined in a foundry in Timaru. Aye. Now, that's what I call inventing. <laughs> Hi. It's Mad Pierce. Do you want to be a birdie, do you? Hey, Dickie Bird, show, show us your wings. wings. Show us how you can fly. fly. Come on, fly. Oh, no! You've had your fun. 
Where do you think you are? Clear off, clear off. Come on, then. Never mind them. She won't be in too much of a hurry after this afternoon. that? Mad John? Oh, Richard. Hello. I was, uh, I was just coming to see you. Nice drop. <laughs> the parson seemed to think so. <laughs> what? Oh, quite a day. Yes. Ah, don't let them worry you. They would know. Right. Would you? What? Uh, no. No what? What I'm doing. No. question. Do you know why I do what I do? What? 
You give a damn? No. Do you think I'd care if you did? No. There you are. Where? Rad John. That's what they call me. Yes, I know. I know. You're not so mad that he wouldn't give you the occasional bottle of moonshine. They call anyone a madman that's not the same as themselves. Uh, so what are you going to do? I don't know. Chuck it in? For them? I thought that you were mad. Mad Dick. What? Mad John. Mad Dick. You think of your own bloody name. Good morning, Mrs. Bennett. Morning, Rose. Mrs. Bennett, I just thought you might like a few eggs. Oh, that's terrible kind of you, Mrs. Bennett. Pay them as before a flame doesn't. Oh, the least I could do. You should have seen the stack of wood your husband split for me. Oh, well, it was either that or spend the afternoon boozing. <laughs> hey, here, come on, and we'll put the cat lab. Rose? No, thanks, Mother. I'll finish what I'm doing. Oh, well, please yourself. You'll never get that contraption off the ground. We had the oars over on Sunday night. It was a great evening. Played a bit of crib and played some music. But we missed a cello. Young Jimmy was asking after you. He says he hasn't seen you for two months, not since the garden party. And few of us have. Oh, when's the big day? When we see you in the air? Everyone's asking. Is that all you've come to tell me? I hope you know your aging mother before her time. Will you leave me alone? Will you? You can rot for all I care.
things go, then. All right, I suppose. Perhaps it's time you took a break. Well, when did you last play a game of tennis? Go to a dance or something. Have you seen anything of Rose lately? No, no. She's not the kind to come to you. Such a proud stuff and go. Look, I don't have to tell you that I believe in what you're doing, but... Well, the father the thinks thing. I'm mad. Who doesn't? I don't, Richard. I'll trim the lantern. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. Good night, Annie. Good night, Annie. Are you going to watch Richard make a fool of himself tomorrow? What did you say? Oh. You were saying something about Richard. No, it's nothing, sir. No. Diggory Pierce. Well, the whole district seems to know. How did I know she didn't? I was going to tell you later, Sarah. I just didn't want to make a fuss of it over dinner. Tell me what? Richard's planning on trying to fly his machine tomorrow. Now, don't worry. I'm going to have a talk with him in the morning. There's still time to stop it. Stop him? But this is what he's been planning for the last two years. But I thought you were worried that he would... I'm worried. Ah, uh, there's no danger. He won't get it off the ground. Perhaps not. But you'll be there all the same. Both of you?
Make an effective scarecrow. Jimmy? Overheating. Oh. Try again in a few minutes, Jimmy. Too heavy, George. Far too heavy. Well, well, well. It's a great looking construction. It sure is. Hey, man. Why don't you tie a balloon to it? That's <laughs> silly. <laughs> Hey, 
Tommy, go on! Get a couple of rocks for the wheels. Control. Oh, one. I couldn't cope with the crossbreed. I need. Now what is it? Is bigger it flat? I'll get a gig. No, I need bigger flat. Can you move your shoulder, Richard? Where's the elevator? All right. All right. Behind you. Where's the elevator? All right. There. All right. Yeah. 